Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Quick Episode 80. Today, we have our weekly Patreon-sponsored movie review. This movie review comes courtesy of our patron, Dylan Chip, and today we're going to be reviewing Speed Racer. So I know Speed Racer has, like, a crazy cult following. Like, there's a lot of people that are just devoutly obsessed with this movie. It's based off a manga series that was then transferred into an anime series that now is a live-action series brought to you by the directors of The Matrix, which was Lily and Lana Wachowski, also goes by The Wachowskis. So yeah, Speed Racer is the tale of a young and brilliant racing driver. When corruption in the racing leagues costs his brother his life, he must team up with the police and the mysterious Racer X to bring an end to the corruption and criminal activities. And yeah, like I said, it's inspired by the cartoon series. So Speed Racer from 2008, cult classic, was kind of a blockbuster that didn't do great with the mainstream, but I feel like over the years it's been reclaimed a bit, mainly because of the style of it. But with that, let's just jump right into it. Um, we'll go around the call and just kind of give our brief, like, spoiler-free thoughts, and then we'll kind of dive into the more more the meat of the movie a little bit. So kick it over to Cam first. Hey, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, Speed Racer. Uh, hey, Cam. Hey, dude. <laughs> Speed Racer, haven't logged it on Letterboxd, just watched it this morning. Uh, it's fine. I think I'll give it, like, a 57 out of 100 or something like that. I enjoy, obviously a stylistic like achievement and that's I think you mentioned that Tyler as like it's it's like a cult classic now I guess it got panned when it came out um from what I've been seeing like it just wasn't received well and now it's kind of got a resurgence kind of kind of has like that Ang Lee Hulk thing going on where people just love it now um colors are beautiful a huge part of this movie again like I said stylistic masterpiece I was never into the manga, never into the anime, didn't haven't watched a single thing um, on them. Don't really care for this. It's just it's not my thing. I'm not first off, I'm not a racing guy. So like just a racing movie already starts probably at something I don't necessarily care for entirely. Um, but it just the story I thought was pretty surface level. We can get into it a little bit, but um, uh, just. I don't know. Now, all I got is after the movie, I watched it. I was like, all right, I'll never watch that again. It was fine. Like it, it just, I, I know I can tell why people like it. It's, it's fun. Um, for the most part, it, it has that beautiful color and visuals. It just, it's not something I'll ever return to. And I think that's kind of my biggest like takeaway from the movie is it was like, all right, that, that was in, in one year out the other, honestly. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, probably around like a, like I said a 57 out of 100 it wasn't bad it just wasn't really for me um not something I'll ever return to though so you said you're not a big fan of racing movies one thing a lot of people say with speed racers that's like an underrated racing movie so that makes sense if you don't like it if you just didn't like racing movies in general but do yeah you I mean, rate like, this I like... higher or lower than cars the first one probably lower every other one two and higher. three higher gotcha yeah I think that cars I think I would agree with that honestly insane, but the first one, I think, the, you know, Cars as a franchise, like people either adore it or pan it. I think the first one has, you know, some good Pixar heart and soul. And then after that, it just becomes Cash Grab City. <laughs> Definitely. George, how about you, Speed uh, Racer? I know uh, you had some extenuating circumstances when you watched the movie that probably <laughs> impacted your rating. Yeah, I, I, I feel like we bring it up every so often where like the mood you're in when you watch a movie absolutely alters your experience so don't don't if you're listening to this and you love speed racer i even said this in my letterbox review don't take my opinion too personally i want to rewatch it i was not in like the right mental emotional mindset for this type of movie and just in the moment it, it absolutely did not work for me i i really did love the aesthetic um i i think they they swung for the they swung for the fences several times with some of these editing choices some of the you know, mix of live action slash animation, I guess you would call it. Um, it, it was stylistically, you know, it, it was great. It was stylistically beautiful. It's it's a movie that screams cult classic. Um, and I, I know I know what it feels like to be on the, the positive side of a cult classic film. You know, I, I adore Pacific Rim and I'll defend that movie to the day I die. Who doesn't? Is that like a movie Man. people don't like? Dude, it's got terrible letterbox ratings. It's got low right, audience right. and critic scores. I, I like know. I like it. So I, I love there. Pacific Rim. Um, but yeah, Speed Racer is absolutely a movie I want to revisit because I, I want to be in the right mindset. Um, when I watch it, I, I don't think I gave it a fair rating. Um, 
I was working from home. Uh, it was early in the morning. I, I just nothing about the story was like sucking me in. Um, and, and the visuals were just a little too eccentric for me at, at that hour in the day. And then that mental state that I was in where I, I was honestly just I, it was more so giving me a headache that, than like giving me reason to enjoy the film. But again, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to revisit this movie. I, I really want to because I truly do think this is a movie I, I will get behind after a second viewing when I'm like locked into what I'm watching. Uh, but right now I landed a two out of five stars. The story didn't really do anything to pull me in. The aesthetic was gorgeous. Obviously, I feel like we'll bring that up several times throughout this review. Um, so, so no complaints there. Um, but yeah, overall, two out of five. I'm sorry. No need to be sorry. Everyone has their own subjective opinions. That's the great great thing about movies and art. So I'll just say off the bat, I gave it a 6.5 out of 10 for 3.5 stars. So I'm the highest here. Just barely barely made it to the 3.5 star club. And I'll just say that right off the bat. So then right now we can just get into more talking a little deeper about the movie because don't really have too much just non-spoilery talk to say. So I figured rather to keep the flow going, we'll just break that, break that wall now. So I thought Speed Racer was just... One of the most artistically distinct and unique movies I've seen in so long. Like the technical achievement of this was so crazy. So I, I'm not super well versed in you know cinematography, and the technical side terms of movies. But I, over the years, I've learned you know what split diopter is. And initially, when I watched this, I thought, okay, we I see different planes of focus in this movie. So are they using split diopter? I Google it. No, they're using like a revolutionary full focus camera. So like everything in the camera frame is in full focus. So that's why you get this really distinct cool different look um which was like really revolutionary at the time and honestly like maybe because this was a critical and commercial flop we really haven't seen any full focus cameras since but um that's why a lot of people in their reviews might say stuff like the wachowskis were ahead of their time type stuff like that because the type of camera work you see in this is just so different and then on top of just the camera work being the full focus you get like all those crazy transitions with the foreground like wiping away something in the background and so many different just like I don't know, just in general, this movie kind of blew me away with the editing and the visual effects, like the racing sequences and just how often there was just basically two scenes playing at once where it'd be like, you know, like a conversation of two people in the front foreground while like some action sequence going on in the background. And I just really appreciated this from a technical level on a major degree, uh, especially the camera work. I thought was really interesting, different, and it was just kind of like visual eye candy. So I think this is definitely falling in the category of a movie that I appreciated a lot more than I enjoyed because the story itself, I had fun with. I enjoyed it. I was never completely locked in, though. I think this movie clocked in at a little over two hours, if I'm not mistaken. I, I just never was fully yeah. engaged with this movie. Um, But I did enjoy the ending. Like, I feel like the ending was predictable, but at the same time, like, it wrapped, like, because... By the time you get to the ending, you realize this is kind of like, you know, kind of a more campy, lighthearted cult classic movie. So, like, when a predictable ending comes, you're not like, oh, this sucks. It was so predictable. Because, like, by then, you've had two hours of this, like, bombastic, bizarre movie. So, it's not like you're, like, let down by, like, a predictable ending. But the ending I really did enjoy. I feel like it, it, it kind of works the kind of overall reveal montage sequence, um, even though, like I said, it was a little predictable. Um, but yeah, I, I think I appreciated this more than I enjoyed it. I can see why people love it because on a technical level, there's just so much to appreciate here and it is just so fun to look at. And it was just such a breath of fresh air for me. Cause I watched just so many movies throughout the week and I was like, Whoa, this one looked just way different than anything I've seen in a long time. Um, the one standout in the cast for me, Polly lit the little kid, um, mm -hmm. so much charisma, like to be able to find a kid that young, it was just like, like, I mean, love him or hate him. Think he's funny or not, but like he was going for it in every scene he was in every line delivery I was like that's pretty impressive to find just like this 12 year old kid is just going toe to toe with you know John Goodman and some other big name actors and just being just as silly if not the most silly and, and fun to watch in the movie um but yeah and then the so I need to look at the cast so what's that what's like the main speed racer guy's name Neil Hirsch Neil Hirsch yeah, he is from uh, Into so, the Wild. Right. So this movie, yeah. Speed Racer is from 2008, and I feel like, I mean, I guess he's grown facial hair since then, but he, to me, he just looks like the same as I feel like I've seen him in movies in like the last couple of years. Like that dude, I feel like just like locked looking like that. Uh, other than no, his yeah, beard. he does look, look very similar. He yeah. kind of had like an era where he was in a lot of things like this, Into the Wild, he was in Lone Survivor. And I feel like I just never see him anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and, and like, because like he's in this movie and I feel like nowadays he looks like the exact same. Whereas like Ariel Winter plays like the Trixie, Trixie in this movie. And she like, looks so yep. different now, like a modern family. So it's just like, well, crazy. yeah. And then, Ma 
Yeah, and then like Matthew Fox plays like Racer X, and I feel like all what's that like TV show? Like, isn't there, he's like in like a crime TV show that's been running for like Lost. twenty seasons? Is it oh no, Lost. he's from Lost. He's from oh, Lost. He's from Lost. Know. Yeah, I was, I was thinking he's from like some Law and Order nonsense, but but yeah, then John Goodman, of course, and oh yeah, Scott Porter played Racer X like before the crash, and I think yeah, he was a. Uh, the quarterback from Friday Night Lights, the TV show, the one who gets like paralyzed, I believe. So a lot of just like people that I'd like seen in a movie or two before. Um, but yeah, so like Speed Racer was a critical failure in terms of critics did not like this commercial failure. The budget was 120 million. It grossed 93.9 million. So as everyone knows, probably by now box office, like if you break even on your budget, you're not actually breaking even because there's so much like because like theaters take a cut and you have marketing budget. So the fact that they weren't even able to make back like their actual budget is like it was just like a massive, massive flop. But who knows? It's been 15 years and there's been so much of a cult following like with all the video on demand rentals. Like it might might be one of those that starts to kind of make its way back over the years. But um, yeah, ultimately just didn't really fully engage me. But everything on a technical degree was so cool. And the Wachowskis definitely have like a creative vision and the matrix and speed racer. And uh, it's, it's fun to see when people have just such a strong style behind them. Um, but yeah, I'll kind of yeah. stop yeah. my rant the, there. The thing, I, I don't think the Wachowskis are like amazing directors. I guess I, I enjoy V for V for Vendetta. I enjoy the matrix. I don't love any of the matrixes after one, um, but they will always like, change something in cinema to make like some incredible some like bullet time obviously in the matrix or what whatever you said where everything's in focus in this um tyler it's just they they always are at least pushing the boundaries on what they can do directing wise and that's very impressive so i at least um can respect them for that um i don't think they're like the best directors ever but i i think they did probably best job that they could with this because in my opinion imagine this movie that doesn't look as good as it does it's if it's not a gripping story i think we all kind of agreed you know on varying levels that we didn't love the story per se but uh the uh the stylistic directing is fantastic so i i do think they gave it their all with this one um yeah the the end reveal of uh what's his name matthew fox still being alive uh racer x right um or Rex racer. Uh, it was fine. Uh, yeah, it was one of those where I was like, great. Again, this movie just kind of went and it, like, it's the worst, it's the worst critique of a movie ever, but it just kind of went in one year out the other of just, I, I wasn't invested all that much. So it's like, cool. Nice. I, I will say with the end reveal, one thing that's just like unfair for any movie to do for pulling a twist is facial reconstructive surgery. Face, yep, like that's yep, such a yep. that's such a low ball. But I mean, again, yeah. this is based on like a manga and an anime, so I don't yeah. think the Wachowskis really did anything new to the Speed Racer story. But but yeah, the whole like yeah, it's I just like so dumb. Agree with that, though, where it's like it's like it looks like a completely different person. And it's like oh, it's the same person the whole time. It's like well, that's that seems unfair. That's just not that doesn't seem all allowed. <laughs> But right. yeah, you're right. Yeah. And then so like looking at the IMDb fun facts, uh, none of this will apply to any of us because like so much of it is saying like, oh, this portion was like a callback to like, you know, the original TV show in 1967 or this was a callback to like the anime series. <clears throat> so if you are a fan of like the anime of Speed Racer or the manga, uh, go check out the IMDb fun facts. There's a lot of like probably fun stuff to dive into. But the one thing that it does says is this movie was shot enti- basically entirely with the green screen in 60 days. So 60 days is a relatively quick shoot, but with a movie with this much visual effects, like Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer took 50, 54 was, days. So like the fact that this is all green screen, like I feel like shooting 60 days is like very manageable, but largely being shot in green screen, I feel like that wouldn't surprise anyone watching the movie. It's like, yeah, it makes sense. It's like uh, the same way like uh, the Star Wars prequels were, like especially Attack of the Clones, which like basically like 99.9% of the movie is just like standing in front of a green screen. This came out, you know, relatively in that era so it makes sense but i really can't find anything on my quick googles and kind of even deeper googles of like other movies using full focus cameras this this is the first time the wachowski's ever used it and Mm -hmm. i can't i can't find any other movies that are using this so i think it was just like an experiment they tried out and clearly it just didn't catch on i'm sure it was like an expensive thing and cinematographers and camera crews weren't familiar with it so it's like a lot of startup costs to use some a new form of filming that if it's not going to work out, then I think other studios looked at this and were like, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll not do that. But I, I liked yeah. it at least in terms of it being something new and different. But like we said, it I don't think the story gripped any that, of us. Yeah, it is interesting. Like when you watch it, because like 
at, at the start, you're kind of like, what the fuck's going on? And you, and I, I didn't even realize it was full focus camera until you said that. So that it, it is interesting because you may just watch and be like, well, this looks a little different than most movies I've seen. Um, but it, 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 I liked it. I, I didn't hate the, um, the full focus and it's not something that like threw me off enough, but I feel like if you don't know what's going on and you absolutely hate it, you'll just not enjoy this at all. <laughs> That's that's exactly where I fell into the, this movie. Yeah. I, as, as like stylistic as it was, and as like infectious as like this world that they built was, there was nothing in this story that like kept me locked in. And I don't know. I, I praise visual effects like crazy, obviously, uh, and I praise like a stylistic movie like crazy. Most recently, John Wick Four. Um, but like, if you don't do anything story wise that's going to engage me, then I, I'm I'm kind of tuned out, and then given like how I was watching this movie, not even, you know, as brilliant and as, you know, pushing the boundaries of filmmaking, the, the, the technical aspect of this film was, it still just did not, it did not resonate with me at all. Like Cam said, it's like just in one ear out the other. I also agree with you, Tyler, where it's like one of those movies where like I respect, but never going to revisit, never going to tell you I love it or at the current moment, even like it. Um, yeah, yeah, and I know this is like a so obviously like the only people I follow on Letterbox are other you know movie talk people or you know people who generally are more you know not not like film bros but in the sense of you know there were people that watch movies all the time like more so than the average yeah. person and all the people all the reviews I'm reading that are super high on it like you know like the usual suspects they're all saying visual feet like love it like this is so creative and weird and funky and fun yeah. um but i haven't seen anyone like on, my, on the reviews there like i really love this story however like i know for a fact that this is like such a cult classic of a movie that not everyone out there is like i love this purely because of style i know there's probably a ton of people listening to this and a lot of people just in general that this is a cult classic for them purely because like it's a fun story that they really enjoy so i know we've kind of been mm -hmm. harping more on the the visual and technical aspects but um and a lot of people i feel like on you know, film criticism side of things when they talk about speed racers, talk about that stuff. But I do know there's probably a large amount out there that that enjoyed this for the silliness it is. I, I really like John Goodman, like pretty much everything, but he didn't really do anything for me here. Really, I did the, too. really the only cast I, I really care for was that kid. Like, and I, he didn't do anything crazy, but I was just like, I, I just really enjoyed that kid. Like, I love like like the kids in the Sandlot, like especially like the the I forgot his name, like the guy who says like you're killing me, Smalls. Like I love when there's like a kid in a movie that's just like willing to just go for it and just like really put his whole heart and behind like lines, just be like hilarious little kid. Um, mm. But yeah, like the I don't know. I think I just want to, which is dumb because I think this is just speaks to how unengaged I was. Is I just wanted more racing scenes because I know like the first hour there's like one tiny one. The end is like basically a full out Mad Max racing scene, but the whole like first hour twenty cool. minutes, yeah, yeah. For the first like hour twenty minutes, I think I was like, I need a big racing scene. And then it did come eventually, but I think that just kind of speaks more to also like how like I just wasn't entertained by this movie, and that's just yeah. as blunt as I'm gonna put you, it. I think you guys haven't seen um, Gran Turismo yet, but I think you're gonna have pretty much the exact same view on that movie. Mm. And <laughs> seen Gran Turismo. Ooh. I'm just saying, like that. That's how I'm. I think the comparison is like very like worthy like the Gran Turismo like the first half it's just like all story minimal racing and I was just not there and then the back half of the movie was just full on racing and that's mm -hmm. where I like completely turned my head on this movie um, so I have a feeling you guys are going to walk out of that movie the exact same way you walked out of this one the story is not going to do anything to like floor you but once they like, get into the racing you're going to be like wow this kind of cracked yeah I, I appreciate you Tyler carrying this review a little bit because this just was a movie i was not i i feel like we kind of did a disservice to it for the people that love this thing because i just i didn't care to talk about to be honest with you. and i don't think george did either so thank you tyler for carrying this i just feel bad bit. like i again we talk about it all the time like there are certain movies that you just need yeah. to be in like the right headspace which one makes me question where tyler was last night watching after sun again you weirdo <laughs> uh um, dark space yeah, i could tell <laughs> Um, oh, it's a dark space but yeah like it's just one of those movies that like you have to be in such a specific like mindset you got to be awake you got to be like just ready for this like stylistic colorful extravaganza of a film and that 9 30 a.m swamped with work uh through the tiktok ban i was just so not there for this movie and again i do feel like i did the movie the patron dylan who recommended this 
the whole cult on this movie is such a disservice. So that's why I will rewatch it eventually. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I will. <laughs> so it's sorry. okay. Like one, of, yeah. like our, like I think like the apocalypto review is like the one where I like said like two words during. So whoever recommended That's that right. one, I did a disservice yeah. to. So we all I we all like, have yeah, our moments. Was, and yeah. yeah, spoiler alert. I actually rated this a one star. I was lying this whole time just to carry this episode. I'm just kidding. I actually did enjoy this. I gave it three point five <laughs> for six. So six point five out of ten for three point five stars. Cam gave it a fifty seven out of one hundred for three star two point five stars. No, three stars. Three stars, okay. And then George gave it a two star. Yeah. So that wraps up our review of Speed Racer. This is one we really want your feedback on in the comments of if you loved it, let us know why. If you didn't like it, let us know why, because I think this one's definitely one that we are can see why people would love it, but also can see why people wouldn't like it. So I really want to know the people listening to this right now what your thoughts on Speed Racer are. Just comment those down below. But with that, we will see you in a couple days with our uh, next episode of Real Talk. Peace. 